Joining me right now is the Chief Investment Officer and Managing Partner at the Bonson Group, David Bonson. Great to see you. David, let me kick it off with you. Uh, your, your thoughts on what we're seeing here take place as investors react to the potential for more economic lockdowns and a spike in coronavirus cases. Yeah, I would really focus on the first part of that sentence. I think investors have to respond to what they anticipate really bad policy decisions could end up being from mayors and governors. But I don't believe for a second it has anything to do with an increase in cases. We saw all the increase in cases throughout the summer. We were told in two weeks we were going to see Armageddon again over and over, Florida, Arizona, Texas. It didn't happen, and the market went up 3,500 points throughout that whole period of time. Right now, Maria, we have the week before the election, Anyone could have been predicting there'd be an elevation in volatility around the uncertainty of the election. And then you see things like Chicago closing down indoor restaurants with no cases being traced back to indoor dining. Investors have to worry about policy idiocy, but that's really what we're responding to, not the existence of higher cases where 40 percent are asymptomatic and 40 percent are better in one to two days. And hospitalization rates are declining declining. Fatality rates have totally collapsed. There's a lot of good news on COVID. We're just not going to hear about it from a lot of the press. Wow. So you just you just do not like what's happening in terms of the reaction to uh, to, to uh, these cases. James Freeman, we wrote about this in the book, uh, the tab for no. COVID-19 still being tabulated. Jump in here. Yeah, I had really hoped that after the spring lockdowns and all of the collateral damage we saw, all of the economic damage, all of the, the isolation and mental health problems and, and non-COVID illnesses that get ignored in a lockdown, it's really discouraging to see politicians, uh, David, putting this back on the table. But like you, I'm hopeful that as we see much lower death rates, despite all the noise, much lower numbers of people dying than we saw in the spring, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that will, uh, that will encourage uh, politicians not to go that route. But, uh, but, but the, um, I guess one, one big question is the vaccine. And I don't know how that plays into your thinking as an investor. Do you expect it soon? Do you think the wise course is to say maybe it never comes? What, what's your thinking on a vaccine possibility? Well, I actually am using the word plural because I think we're going to have more than one vaccine. And I think that after the election is done, some of the people that have taken their platform over the last couple of months to talk down the idea of a vaccine and stir up doubt in our society about the integrity of our medical process, which is the most sophisticated and, and successful in the world. All of a sudden, I think those people are going to decide that they do believe in the efficacy of a vaccine. The market doesn't wonder yeah. if one's coming. The market knows one is coming. Now, the details, we don't know yeah. exactly when, what the distribution will be, who the winning players will be. I suspect you're going to have two or three companies with successful approved vaccines yeah. competing for business. So, um, no, I, it yeah. does play into our, our thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think what I hear you saying is after the election, we're going to see a much different tone in terms of these lockdowns. Let me get your take on big tech, David. They're facing lawmakers this morning. The CEOs of Facebook, Twitter, Google set to testify before the Senate Commerce Committee today. They will face questions over Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act. This law essentially shields them from lawsuits over content posted to their platforms because they're posted by users. What are you expecting here? Is this a reason to sell these stocks? Well, as you know, Maria, because we're big dividend growth investors at the Bonson Group, a lot of those FANG names and big tech names are not investable for us anyways. But I have to say, it's a valuation story. When you, if they were trading at 30, 40 times earnings going into this uh, next level of regulation and, and inquisition, that would be one thing. But when you come into this with such a perversely elevated valuation, there's no margin of error. And so I think these things are on a risk reward basis, very troublesome. We don't own them, but I wouldn't want to own them right now. And I, and I also believe that the whole conversation that plays out on big tech and its role in our society is nowhere near over. This is going to be ongoing. This is not a one-and-done Senate hearing. I'm very confident of that. Yeah. 
and, and both both sides of the aisle really want to want yeah. to attack these companies because of the suppression of information. I mean, we just saw them suppressing information about Hunter Biden. What's your take on the election and how this impacts money? The impact of a President Trump victory, for example, J.P. Morgan is saying that an orderly win for the president could propel the S&P 500 by 13 percent. But if the Democrats sweep, the market would be mostly neutral. This is J.P. Morgan's new report this morning. Your reaction? Yeah, I always love those quant estimates as where 13 percent comes from in an orderly win. But yeah, look, um, certainly the market is not. I agree with that. The mar market is not discounted. The idea of an orderly win for Trump. I don't think that's the most likely scenario. If President Trump is to win, I do think it will be a nail biter and probably take a couple of weeks for votes and so forth to come in. Um, the biggest issue to me, though, with markets will be the Senate. Because if we have some inclination next Tuesday that Joe Biden's going to win, but it looks like the Republicans can hold the Senate, then I think that's going to be um, far more impactful to markets to be able to hold the, the Senate so that some of the crazier parts of Biden's agenda cannot be implemented. All right. We will leave it there. David, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll be watching growth dividend payers which is uh, your purview. We'll be uh, looking at it, and we'll see you soon. David Bonson joining us Thanks, there. Maria. We're just getting